Hey, welcome back to another one. Today we're going to be looking at receiving those messages that we were sending ourselves in the last episode. So if you remember, we had the client, the client would send some messages over uh, with the send to server function, and then the server would receive it right here in the data section, and it would parse it. It would actually um, first do a read byte to get the operation code, and then do a read, um, a fix string of 128, just like... I don't remember where it is. Um, here it is. Okay. So this one, fixed string, 128. By the way, I changed this type to, uh, it used to be a string. I've changed it back to fixed string, 128, because that's the actual format we use. So that's what we had in the previous episode. However, the code was all put in here and it would only work for the net chat message. Today, we're going to be looking at scaling this up, making sure that we can receive more than one message. And, um, and we're going to do that right now. So, What's happening right now is that um, we are going inside of this right here, but then we need to decide, hey, which message are we trying to read? Are we trying to read a net chat message or maybe, for example, a net um, player position? This is where we need to actually do a switch statement. Now, um, I actually want to isolate that logic somewhere else. So here's what I'll do. I'll call something called on data and I'll send it the stream. On data is going to be a new virtual void function that's going to take in the data stream reader and I'll just call it stream. Okay, now within the on data, here is what we're going to be doing. We are first going to define that we will need to retrieve a net message out of this. What exactly is the type of net message? We still don't know just yet. That's, that's what we're here to find out. Um, and the way we're going to be finding it out is by using the operation code. So the first byte within the message. And we'll do it this way. So var operation code is going to be equal to operation code reader dot read, oh sorry, stream dot read byte. Now we receive a stream of data. We read the first byte and with that we will know what is the type that we have to, to parse. But do note that during during the read, we actually bumped our stream reader just a little bit further ahead. So when we are to deserialize this type, we're gonna have to assume that the first byte was already read. So don't go back there, don't reread the byte, because if you are to do that, you're going to corrupt the rest of the data. If that sounds like Chinese to you, then uh, just stick along. I'll explain it again in a bit. Um, so once I have that, I'll do a switch statement and I'll put everything in the same line here. I'll say, if, if this is a chat message, by the way, I've added a new, um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I've added a new opcode, so player position. We'll go back to that in a second. Uh, chat message. And if that's the case, we are going to create a new net chat message with the reader. So again, something new right here. So if we go under the upcode enum, I've added a new player position. It's just going to be another type of message. I wanted to show you um, how to implement something else and we'll do it a little bit later on here. So uh, I'll just lay down the base code for it. It's going to look something like that, but right now we will comment it out. Let's make sure we also have a default statement uh, to just in case we forgot to add a upcode to our thing. So message receive had no upcode. Okay. And then just after that, I want to call another function that is going to be part of the net message saying received on server. Okay. So three new things, of course, the upcode. Second, we have a new constructor here that takes in the data stream reader. And third, a new function called message received on server. So a lot of changes are going to happen on our net message and we'll start right here. This is our base object and I'll create two new class, public virtual void, not class, sorry, function, received on client and of course received on server. Those are now part of the net message base. Next up, we have to go check the net chat message. This one had a new constructor. And now, um, you know, I keep changing my architecture. Sometimes I find something I like, sometimes I don't. Um, for this tutorial, for this uh, series, you could say, 
I decided to go in such a route that I'm always going to have a minimum of two constructor. One is a empty constructor, as you just saw ahead. And the other one is going to be a constructor that will take in the following, a data stream reader. So for every single one of my messages going for forward, I'm going to have one that is an empty constructor in which I'm just going to say, hey, this is the opcode and another one in which I'm going to deserialize that message, that actually that, that reader. And then from that point on, all the other implementation of the constructor like this one are just going to be used for where I'm calling, like if, if I'm calling this from uh, the other script that you saw, the other script would like to take a string message. If I'd like to send, um, for example, a message with a certain color, I could have another constructor for that. Um, it, it really just matters. It depends on where you want to use it, really. But in terms of the two important one, it's the one that is empty, in which I just set the upcode or any default value, and the one that uses the data stream reader. Uh, the reason I do this is because that's what we receive, right? So when we receive the message, we receive a data stream. Our goal right here is going to be to convert that data stream into the class and fill the fields in it. And the way we'll do that is like this. We'll say, hey, deserialize with the reader, which would mean that now the reader will take in a data stream reader, just like so. We're going to receive an error over here simply because the signature doesn't match the children. Uh, going back on the old object, uh, we're going to do data stream reader, reader. We'll do that. We'll do it on, on the base object. So when I go here, I don't have any more errors. And now we have to deserialize this object. And it's very simple. Now, when it comes down to deserializing, we've did it uh, in the previous episode. We just have to read the buffer in the same order as we set it. So here, we did a write byte, so we wrote the operation code, and then we wrote um, a fixed string of 128. So we did it in this order. Now here, we actually don't have to read the byte. So the first byte is handled already. And it's handled by the previous function that called this. So the um, doo -doo -doo, over here, we already did the read byte. And then we took this stream and we sent it over. Did I call it stream? <laughs> we sent it over to the constructor. So at that point, the stream already read the first byte. And all we have to do is the following. Uh, so we'll take the chat message. It's going to equal to the reader read fix string, just like so. All right. So with that in mind, I think we have everything we need to have this message carried over. Let's let's make sure I double check here. So when we receive data, we receive the chat message. The chat message creates a new object. And then um, that object is created. It's deserialized within the constructor. And then we call received on server. OK, so I'm going to go here on my chat message. And I'm just going to make sure I can override this object I received on server just so I can have a look at the actual data. So I'll do a debug.log. I'll say server to dot plus my chat message. So it's going to mean that I have received this on the server. And in the same fashion, I'll also do this. So I'll do receive on client. And of course, I'll write client here instead of server. So this way, what's going to happen now is when I run the game, um, and I press on the submit button, my client is going to send a message over to the server. And this one is going to receive it just like we had earlier. So the server has received the data. So server said one, two, three, one, two, three. That's what we had here. And it's not the client. It's actually the server. So this seems to work. Now, what I'd like to do um, before we close off this episode is, of course, show you another example with the player position. So I bet that you're trying to create more than just a chat system. <laughs> so. Uh, let's do another example, right? I'm going to start with the operation code. As you see, I've created a new message um, operation code. And then I'll follow that up with a new C sharp class for that message. So net player position. Just to save a little bit of time, and we'll try to do it very quickly, I'll just grab what I had earlier for the net chat message, paste it in here, and change the name of the class. So net player position. 
So we're gonna have the opcode as always, followed by um, the player position. So I'll do a public int player, I know, sorry, player ID, not player position. Followed by three float. So of course, player X. Oh, did I call it player? Let's call it something else. So position X, Y, and Z. And we're gonna write the values in the same exact order. So we don't need the chat message here either. Now for the constructor, I'll change that to player position. The operation code is of course player position. Make sure we change all the constructor name and also all of these. These two will remain the same everywhere we go. So technically we could probably do something here with the base class, but as of right now, I don't have any other implementation. <laughs> all right. Um, what else do we need here? We have the player position as a constructor. Okay, so when we call this function, how do I expect to call it when I want to send my position over? I am thinking something like this. So int player ID, float x, float y, and float z. We could technically input a vector3 in here, but I'd rather not make any reference to vector3 because it's a Unity Engine class. And once we branch out, uh, I mean, we'll still have access to the Unity Engine DLL, but once we, once we branch out, I'd rather not have the vector3 plus. It's not a type that is serializable by default, so I'm just going to split them apart as of now. We could write our own implementation of vector3 and make sure it's serializable. That's also something we could do. But um, at the moment, let's just make this work. So player ID is going to be equal to the one we're receiving parameter. Position X is equal to X, position Y to Y, and finally Z to Z. Our serialize is going to change a little bit. So of course we want to write a byte with our bait, um, our operation code, followed by a write int with the player ID, followed by a write. Do we have access to float? Yes, we do actually. That's a very good news. Uh, position X, Y, and Z. That's how we serialize. And of course, when it comes down to deserialize, it's the exact same thing, but without the byte. So we'll do player ID is equal to reader dot uh, read int. That was it. int, yep. Followed by the X position, reader dot read float. The Y and then the Z position. So our serialize and deserialize works quite good. And here we could say uh, boom, 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 server player ID um, plus position X. At that point, if you're gonna do something disgusting, I might as well just use <laughs> string.format, but uh, I'm a little bit too deep in, so. <laughs> Uh, position Z. Okay. Same thing down here. Why not? Okay. So now we created a new message to send over to the server and we are going to create a, um, a small class that will take care of actually sending that position over. And I'd like to put it on top of my player. So here I have my player motor, which I can move around. That's just like moving mechanic. Um, and I'm going to create a new script called send position. And I already have it right here. Let me just copy it and paste so we save a little bit of time since this is an example. Here is what I do. So I keep a float value. That is the time value, which is the last time that I've sent my position. I have a reference to the client in a very disgusting manner with the find object of type. Um, so I'm aware where the client is. I know when is the last time I've sent my state. And if it has been more than one second since the last time that I've sent my state, then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new player position. So that's my message with an ID. That could be your player ID, it really doesn't matter. Um, this is gonna be assigned by your server once once you connect, most likely. And then I send X, Y, and Z as float parameters. And of course, client send to server the net message. And then I'll make sure to set the last time so we don't send uh, like multiple message per, per second or one message per frame. Okay, let's give this a try. Then hit play and let's just move around and see if the data 
is being sent. And I get a no reference right now, so what is this exactly? So message had no operation code. Why do I have so many warnings? Okay. Um, what could be the issue? So message had, oh, there, it's right here. I forgot to actually remove the case. So um, new message also means you need a new statement in your switch. So I'm glad we actually put that debug.log in there because it just saved us a little bit of debugging time. We're now connected to the console and then as I'm moving around, you're gonna see the value are shifting to send me the, the proper value. So if I jump, you'll see the Y value will go up and back to down. And that's being sent every second. As you can see the player, not the player, but the server is the one receiving it. So that's some good news. And that's that's what we wanted to achieve today. So we have multiple message being sent, or actually possible message being sent, both the chat message and also the player position. And um, this is where we're gonna be ending this video because it's getting quite long, but in the next one, which should be the final one for the very small tutorial, we're gonna make sure we can receive it on the client. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna ask the server to broadcast this message over to the clients and uh, that should do the job. Yeah, so we're gonna have back and forth movement. <laughs> All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.